I prepared something. Oh, nice. Okay, so I want to rank Diablo likes. And what I consider Diablo like in this context is just some form of RPG with leveling with a very heavy emphasis on, on the loot and on itemization. And is that why Borderlands is in there? Yes. It, it plays different. It's not isometric. I think it's, it might be the only game that's not isometric, or the only games, but I feel like the, uh, the core gameplay goals are very similar. And I, in, you, in case you're confused, I have them multiple times. I have Diablo, for example, here, and then I have Diablo again. These very professionally done cogs <laughs> indicate modding. So I'm going to look at the game itself, and then the game with mods, because I'm going to rate them differently. Nice. And also, for most games, I consider them included with all expansions. There are some exceptions. Diablo, because Hellfire is the... Eh, if you've played Diablo, you know what I mean, and otherwise, yeah. Hellfire is like, it adds some content, but it's very low quality. There's some people that love Hellfire, there's some people that hate it and think it should have never been released. So there's a big divide. And for Diablo 3, I have it two times. Once for... Released and up to Reaper of Souls and ones for the current version, because they are also very different. So I'm going to start out with Diablo 1, and I'm going to try to rank them without too much personal bias. Like, for somebody that plays them nowadays, how would they be? And I think I'm going to have to put Diablo at a B tier. It's the Diablo-like, obviously, that's it basically spawned the genre. It has amazing atmosphere, and it's very simple. But it just gets the simplicity right. It doesn't have a ton of content, it doesn't have a lot of longevity, but it really, it really hits the atmosphere. That's something I don't think any other game on this list does as well. But it's just, it's so old, it came out at the end of 96. It's ancient, it just, it just doesn't play very smoothly compared to modern games. And then we have other genre defining game. It definitely deserves to be. Spoiled. Yeah, but th that's I'm trying to uh, look at it as the as the product that it is. It just happened to spawn a genre. But Diablo nowadays, where you have all the other alternatives, is is still a solid game. I mean, I personally love it. For me personally, it's in S tier. But for similar games, there's just better options. Same with Diablo 2. I'm talking specifically about Diablo 2 with the expansion. I actually never played it without it. It also set the standard for more modern Diablo likes with a faster pace, a lot more itemization and a lot more customization and longevity. Different classes and I don't know what else it introduced so many ideas. But it just feels so clunky today. It's just you, you can feel that it's very archaic in many of its, its ways. The combat feels kind of... I don't know what it lacks. It just doesn't feel as smooth as many modern games. The trading is done either through in-game chat, which very few people do, through external third-party sites, which brings other problems with it. It's just... And the official servers, the Battle.net servers, are just a terrible experience. You know what? Let's go with Diablo 3, up until Reaper of Souls. So on release, it was questionable at best. On release, probably in C tier. But then it improved, but it still had fundamental issues. Namely, one was basically to clear Inferno, which is the highest difficulty. Act 1, you need gear that drops in Inferno Act 2. And to clear Act 2, you need Act 3 gear and so on. So you basically needed to buy gear from other people that use some kind of cheese build. There were builds where you cycle immunity and then you're just literally unkillable. And then, yeah, you can just kill stuff. It might take forever, but you can at least clear the content. And there was also an incredible over-reliance on the auction house. It was basically impossible to play cell phone and get anywhere. The gameplay itself, honestly, it felt smooth. It was, I liked it. It was just that the itemization, they ruined it, really. And also, legendaries were just a joke back then. You only played with rest. The gameplay otherwise was pretty fun for the time, though. I will admit that. But for nowadays, it's just, there's better options. And it doesn't have the charm that Diablo 1 and 2 have. But it's also, it's, it's not absolute garbage. So... I don't know if I'll put anything in D tier, actually. I might, I might reevaluate. You know what, let's, let's go with Dungeon Siege. Dungeon Siege, I believe, was originally aimed to be a Diablo killer. I think that's what they plan to do. It plays differently because you control multiple characters instead of just one. 
and it's not isometric perspective it plays more like a, a dragon age i think it's the modern equivalent and it definitely had some cool ideas but the itemization was very lackluster i actually replayed it not too long ago and you just look for one or two stats on your items and the gameplay is quite bland unless you play a spellcaster if you play bow you literally just stand there you target the enemy you just keep shooting or with melee the same as a spellcaster you might shuffle around your spells keep buffs up heal your allies throw some fireballs and then change because the enemy is maybe resistant to fire it's it's a lot more engaging so they really failed on making different playstyles interesting you should add the grim dawn to, to your list of games as well i oh yeah that's I, I forgot to mention um i have several games not on the list because i haven't played them oh, grim dawn no wilson and I actually, I, I actually played a good bit of grim dawn i think there was another one I technically have played Grim Dawn, but I I wasn't really in the right mindset, so I don't think I can evaluate it fairly. So that's why I don't have it on here. And Wilson, Lords of Mayhem, I have never played. Also Torchlight 3 I have never played, so they're not on this list. And I believe Lost Ark was also said to be similar. I haven't played it, can't put it on here. Well, I'd, I'd throw Grim Dawn somewhere like A or, a or B kind of area for, for once. This was, I think it was the first time that I played this kind of game and actually got entranced in the story somewhat. But games like this are just more gameplay related than story, but... I think based on what you say and what others said, I would bump it up to A tier because I hear a lot of positive things about it, which is why yeah, I'm planning yeah. to replay yeah, it. Yeah. And also, mod support is a huge yeah. one. Okay, yeah, so Grim Dawn, based on what I heard, I would also say A tier, probably. Uh, let's take Dungeon Siege 2. Dungeon Siege 2, it improved on several things of Dungeon Siege 1, but it just... It's just nothing special i played through it once and i thought about it several times like oh yeah i played this should i replay it and then i'm like no <laughs> i i might as well just replay <laughs> anything else that on this list that i've played before so i would rather replay diablo there's just even though i've played all three diablo games each one for 500 hours or more some of them maybe even all of them for thousands of hours or who knows how long Dungeon Siege 2, I've only played through it once, and it was just a, yeah, it, it wasn't bad, I, I enjoyed it back, at, back then, although that was probably like 10 years ago, but it was just not, not that memorable, and it probably would feel a lot worse by now. I haven't played Dungeon Siege 2 in, I don't know how long, because I only played it once. All the other games I've played at least somewhat recently, so I can judge them better, or at least most of them. Okay, let's do the original Torchlight. I'm not sure if I want to put this in C or D tier. It's it's been quite a while since I played this. This was it. It just felt exactly like a Diablo. Like you know exactly what you get. Dungeon Siege was a little different because of the party system and all that. Torchlight was very much a dungeon crawler Diablo. Like it was exactly what you would expect from it. The story wasn't particularly amazing. I can't think of many amazing new systems that it brought. I think it had the pet system. Where you can store items on your pets and then send the pet to town. During that time it can't fight for you, but you don't have to run to town. So a few cool things here and there, but overall, meh. It doesn't really offer much. And nowadays, you just have so many more alternatives. Let's do Diablo 1 with mods. I'm gonna put this on 8 here. Just be because it, it still has the somewhat nowadays archaic feeling. Well, I, I don't mind it, but I know that many people might not really enjoy the gameplay pacing and many mods still have that but you have so many options diablo 1 has like crucible mode which is just diablo 1 but really really fucking difficult then you have belzebub mod which is diablo 1 but with several elements from diablo 2 and with a pacing more around diablo 2 then there's the hell 1 and the hell 2 mod which i didn't really enjoy them but a lot of people seem to enjoy them they have a ton of new items added and just i don't personally see the appeal but lots of new classes and just it just expands the game vastly. And also the price. Diablo 2 mods, I'm gonna put up here as well. There's mainly three very popular Diablo 2 mods from what I know, which is Project Diablo 2, Path of Diablo, and Median XL. The former two are... Their goal is to balance Diablo 2 as if Blizzard continued developing it. So a few balancing tweaks and a few quality of life changes and maybe a few new things here and there, but keep it mostly Diablo 2. And Median XL is more like an overhaul. It's 
more like a new game based on the Diablo 2 engine, I guess. You still have the feeling of Diablo 2, which can feel somewhat archaic, but you have a lot faster paced stuff and just uh, a lot more options. For example, you have loot filters in Project Diablo 2 and Path of Diablo, which just wasn't a thing at the time, which significantly improves gameplay convenience. Project Diablo 2 was made by, by somebody who was a very active POD player who just wasn't happy with where the development was going. They both have the goal of developing Diablo 2 as if it was maintained by Blizzard with minimal changes to keep it still interesting and obviously the quality of life stuff. Like if you play both, you will see there's a lot of similarities. Torchlight 2? I played that uh, during a time when I had no internet in, I believe, early 2017. It wasn't bad, but it was just like, okay, yeah, I, I can play. This is a thing I can actually play without internet. Unlike, for example, Path of Exile or Diablo 3. But if I had internet, I certainly wouldn't be playing it right now. I didn't hate it, but it's it wasn't particularly memorable. I couldn't tell you anything about the story. Although, to be fair, I'm not good at following stories. But that, that game, I have no fucking clue what the story is about. Gameplay was meh. It's okay, but you have better alternatives. If you want more Diablo likes and you played all the other ones, sure, go for it, but there's better options. And also, some of the balancing was very annoying. And then you either have to respawn at the entrance of a map and then run back, or you respawn where you die, but you pay a, a very big penalty. I don't know if it was an experience or gold, but yeah, basically you don't really want to do it, so you just end up backtracking a lot because you respawn at the entrance of a map. It's just eh, meh. Let's do the original Borderlands. I loved Borderlands. When it came out, like even before it came out, when I heard about the game, it, it just sounded like the perfect game for me. I love shooters. I love looting. It's the perfect game. I'm going to put uh, like both of them. The, both Borderlands and the, re, uh, the remaster or enhanced edition or whatever it's called. They're basically the same. The remaster does some things better, but also some things worse. I'm, gonna, I'm not sure if I want to put it in B or C tier. It's... It was great at the time. I think I'm, I'm leaning more towards C tier. But like high C tier, I guess. It was amazing when it came out. I played so much of it. I played through that so many times. I, I loved it. But nowadays, it's just... First of all, there's New Orleans that just play smoother. And second of all, by now, it, there's some things that just... You could forgive it at the time because it was new. And yeah, 2009, I believe, is when it came out. But nowadays, it's just... Eh, there's some, just some things that are just not as convenient. And the Game of the Year Enhanced Edition, which is basically the remaster, fixes some of the issues, but it also takes some really cool aspects away. So I can't really give it that much higher. Maybe you could make an argument for B, but I'm just going to put it in C. I might move some down to D later on, actually, just because I feel like I'm going to be overpopulating it. So this one, I'm going to have to give some more context to. Because I'm, I'm putting Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls on par with the other two Diablos. What I'm looking at is Reaper of Souls when it was still in active development. Nowadays, Diablo 3 is basically life, life, what is it called? Life, lifeline support? And there's a little, a little power boost to a patch every season, uh, to, a patch, to a set every season, and that's it. There's no new content, and yeah, it's just, you can still play it, but yeah. Nowadays, it's just completely ruined by power creep. Hardly any of the content is relevant. But in 2014, 2015, I had really a lot of fun. It, it fixed many of the main issues that Diablo 3 had. It fixed the uh, over-reliance on trading by increasing drop rates, but making stuff account-bound. Uh, you could trade with people that were in your lobby when it, the item dropped. It added new endgame incentives through the Paragon system, which is just basically another leveling system. It added a new variety of endgame instead of just farming the story bosses over, like you do it in Diablo 2, for example, where you just do Mephisto runs, Bay runs, and whatever. And Reaper of Souls added the Rifts, which is just a randomized map. It just added so much variety, and it just really fixed many of the big issues of Diablo 3. Nowadays, I would put it to C, and even, even the bottom of C tier. Simply because you get to play it, it's enjoyable as a casual, not for the story, but... Uh, it's enjoyable for a casual player. And then after like 50 hours at best, you're done because it's just 
completely ruined by power creep. There's not much to do. You, you reach max level, and then due to some stupid mechanics, you get your entire endgame set that increases your damage by 10,000% or something the set bonuses are up to. And I'm not exaggerating. It literally, like, this and this skill deals 10,000% more damage, which bumps you up several difficulties, and then you're ready to end game farm. It's just, eh. But when it was, when it was still not completely ruled by power creep, I really enjoyed it. You know what? You're, you're right, though. Yeah, you have a point. Reap of Souls still, nowadays, is C tier. I probably need to move some stuff around at the end. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's take Titan Quest. I didn't play Titan Quest when it came out. So I not too long ago played Titan Quest, the anniversary edition with both the Ragnarok expansion and Atlantis. First of all, Atlantis is fucking garbage and should be free at best. Second of all, I think when, when Titan Quest came out, it might have been good, but Diablo 2 was already there and Diablo 2 did so many things right. It's okay if you really need more, but... It doesn't do any it didn't do anything particularly amazing. Build diversity from what I could find on and wasn't great. You could target farm certain items. The crafting was really underwhelming. Overall it was just I don't know, it was just nothing amazing. I think I if I need to I think I need to move a few things down here actually. Just to be fair. Like if, if Titan Quest is in D tier, these also need to be in D. Compared to the C tier, actually. Yeah, they are just... They, they are, they're sadly just too old, basically. Okay, let's do Torchlight 2 with mods. Very simple. It's still Torchlight 2. Yeah, it's okay. Mods can fix a lot of things and can add a lot of content. But it's not particularly amazing. The game is just kind of old by now, so it has its limitations. But mods can fix a lot of things, so definitely at least one tier above. Although, I haven't tinkered too much with it. So maybe there are some mods that put it into A tier, but personally, from what I've seen, yeah, it's B tier, but there's an option to put it higher. Van Helsing, what do we do with you? I'm kind of torn between B and C tier. It feels from the pacing more like a Diablo 3 than a Diablo 2 or 1. You Stuff dies a lot faster, but the story is okay. At first, I really had fun with it. I, I started playing it and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, this is actually awesome. And the longer I played it, the more it just felt like it's always the same. I mean, sure, every game is always the same in some way. But I felt that in a very negative way. So I think I'm actually going to have to put it at C tier. I played through it and I, didn't, I don't regret it. It's not a bad game. I mean, none of these on here are really bad games. Some of them may be a little worse, but I wouldn't call any of them really bad. But it was just... I don't know, it, it lacked a certain, some variety. It, it had some really cool things, like there's some tower defense levels just sprinkled in there in an RPG. Personally, I'm not a fan of tower defense, but it's, it's cool for variety. But overall, it's just lack something. And also sometimes, while the gameplay overall feels smoother than maybe Diablo 1 or 2, sometimes it felt very stiff and you're locked into certain animations and it just felt very punishing towards certain play styles, which I didn't enjoy. Uh, let's move on with... Victor Vran. I'm still currently playing through this game. I haven't finished it, but I've gotten a good enough taste. I think I'm more than halfway through the story. I know the core gameplay loop, and I think I'm, j I'm going to have to put it on par with Van Helsing. The itemization is not as great as in any other game here, I believe. The weapons are very, very simple. You have five different prefixes, or maybe a few more, but you just have a few prefixes. On weapons and then the webs have different rarity which de determines their damage range you have white you have green you have yellow you have purple and uh, i don't know maybe one other rarity but it doesn't matter it's very simple there's no uniques that have special abilities that have unique stuff on them as the name implies the leveling is super simplistic like you level up here you gain plus 500 hp or plus one or however many the customization comes mostly through something called destiny cards it doesn't allow you the character customization uh, that any other game on here allows you but the gameplay still very much much feels like a diablo game but simplified it's it's almost if if diablo was a mobile game not in a necessary negative sense just a little simplified a little easier to get into story yeah it's okay gameplay wise i don't know how much longevity it has but playing through it i'm having fun let's do borderlands 2 s tier it doesn't, uh, it, it certainly shows its age slowly, but 
it just offers so much content and so much variety. I, I've personally played it for almost 500 hours, which is not as much as the other Diablo games, but that's just because Borderlands is maybe aimed at a more casual audience in terms of the dedication to grinding. Borderlands 2's story is good, maybe even great. That's, I mean, some people find it a little immature, cringy, edgy, whatever you want to call it. I really liked it. There's just a ton of content. You have specific, you have specific drops from specific bosses, so you can target farm certain things to uh, flesh out your build. You have, I don't know how many different classes. There's a good variety, and it's just, it's just centered around co-op. It plays very well in co-op. I mean, all of these games, I believe, can be played in co-op, but I feel like Borderlands might just be one of the best co-op game experiences, just in, in general. Borderlands just feels like the, the ultimate co-op uh, gaming experience. I'm probably very biased because I grew up playing Borderlands when it came out with friends, and it was just the ultimate co-op experience for us, so maybe I'm a little biased in that regard, but I just feel like Borderlands co-op is just... That's just how the game is meant to be played. With the other two in co-op, yeah, it works, of course. But it just doesn't feel as intended for it, I guess. It feels more like an afterthought. I'm not saying that it really feels like an afterthought, but more of an afterthought than like in, in Borderlands. Borderlands 2 has, has it all. It's, you have the story you can play through multiple times. You have endgame stuff. You have even raid bosses. Although it's not like an MMO raid. It's more like a 15 to 30 minute fight, I think. But... Yeah, you can just play through the story and then call it quits. You can play through the story multiple times for increased difficulty, of course. You can grind for the endgame gear, you can go for the raid bosses. It basically offers something for everyone. Borderlands pre-sequel. I'm a little torn. I think I'm going to put it in B tier, but it's maybe, maybe it's a little more towards A tier. In simple terms, Borderlands pre-sequel is an inferior Borderlands 2. It came out afterwards, but it just... It lacks the humor of Borderlands 2. It doesn't have as much content in basically every regard. The story is shorter. The story is worse. I think there's less classes to play. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the variety of guns, actually. And there's... Is there any endgame in Borderlands pre-sequel, really? Actually, yeah, there's one or two raid bosses. In Borderlands 2, it just feels like there's so much more to do in endgame and also just overall in content. But to be fair, Borderlands 2 had a lot more DLCs than Borderlands pre-sequel. Borderlands pre-sequel is just, if you enjoyed Borderlands 2 and you want more, it's good. But if you just want to get into Borderlands, I wouldn't start with pre-sequel. So this is a tough one. I thought about this uh, before quite a bit. And I have to put it at A or S tier. And if I try to exclude the fact that I'm very much burned out on this game. I've played this game for almost 2000 hours. I'm just really burned out on this game. There's no other way to say it. It has a lot of problems, especially when a new league starts. There's a lot of bugs and balancing issues, and it has a lot of dead content. Like, there's just skills that you shouldn't use because they're severely underpowered. There's items that just basically have no place, like, at best for a meme build. But there's just so unbelievably much content. Base game is free to play, although I would say to properly enjoy the game, you have to drop some money on stash tabs. And there's also cosmetics, although I personally don't care about them, but yeah. It's, it's more like a demo, I would say. You can play it for free, you can try it, and once you hit endgame, you kind of need to invest a little bit of money. But I think that's a fair business model. They gotta make their money. I mean, I would prefer purely cosmetic, but I can understand it. And it's better than many other modern games. And because the game is a live service, you have new content updates every three months. They have a new league, which is a new game mechanic. They rebalance a bunch of the skills, they rework certain things, and it just... They really try to keep the game fresh for people. I mean, there's a reason I played for almost 2000 hours. But at some point I just kinda got burned out on it, and... The, the main issue, aside from balancing problems and a few bucks here and there, and some design decisions, like, in, in certain regards the game is deliberately tedious. And I'm not gonna go into detail here, but it's for a reason. Whether it's good or not bad, that's for you to decide. But it, it does offer regularly new content and there's just there's basically always something challenging to do. But you can very easily be overwhelmed as a new player. But it just, for the price, which is, it's free to play. And as I said, you only really need to sink in money at the end game. It's worth a try. I'll put it that way.
another big negative is of pure is just in general bloat there's so much added to it a lot of it is cool but also there's so many so many pointless items so many by now almost pointless mechanics and just it's a game it came out in i think 2011 it went into public beta uh no that was closed beta and i think 2013 14 ish maybe uh public beta and they just build up on it and build and build and you just have so much content which on the one hand is great but on the other hand there's also so much dead weight and so much useless content and if you don't know what to keep you just have five million items and not enough stash space which item do you keep how do you know what's valuable it's a lot to figure out okay borderlands 3 <clears throat> i'm putting it in s tier in spite of its story the story is almost physically painful levels of cringe it is so fucking bad and i'm someone i i enjoyed the somewhat edgy humor of the earlier borderlands games i generally like the like how borderlands doesn't really take itself too seriously but borderlands 3 just fuck the story ignore it ideally just it's bad but the gameplay it feels just so much smoother and just overall you have so many more options than in borderlands 2 well there's a huge problem with power i don't want i don't know if it's power creep really but you just get showered in legendaries and it's in a way somewhat like in like diablo 3 to diablo 2 it's just it's easier you get more items whereas in borderlands 2 you find a legendary or the equivalent maybe like let's say one per 30 minutes i don't know it's been quite quite a bit since i played it and in borderlands 3 I'm not kidding if I say you find like a legendary every five minutes or more and most of them are just worthless. On the one hand it's cool because you can just try out everything and everything is accessible but on the other hand it also just diminishes it. There's very little need to max out items. You know in Diablo 2 you really you really need the top tier items. In Borderlands 3 you just you just get them. You farm a boss for like 10 minutes and you get it. You can maybe get a shitty variant of it but a shitty variant and a good variant the difference is like like if in, uh, in diablo 2 if the difference between a bad and a good raw of an item is this in borderlands 2 the difference between a bad and a good raw of items may be this much it just doesn't matter as long as you have the item you're basically there and you don't even need the best items poorly rolled to get through the game it's it's kind of easy in that regard so you have to be okay with that but for just a, a sort of mindless casual grind I find it very satisfying and it has very many systems to keep you engaged. You have like the an equivalent of a Paragon system or the, the badass rank system from Borderlands 2. You have other leveling systems at the end game. You can grind for perfectly rolled items. And then there's raid bosses and similar things. So there's a variety of content to keep you playing. Finally, last epoch. Currently in early early access, it's I would describe it as somewhere in between Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. It's not the crazy complexity of Path of Exile, but it's also not the overly simplistic in Diablo 3 where you have three, four builds maybe per class at most, and it's just one type of endgame and that's it. It has more build variety, but it's not so absurdly complex as Path of Exile. But Path of Exile had a, obviously a certain head start in developing endgame content, so Last Epoch doesn't have that, which is why I'm not going to put it at S tier. But it has potential. In my opinion, it is the most promising game and probably in the not too distant future, I would move it up to S tier. Also, it currently doesn't have multiplayer. I think it's the only game on this. No, wait. Last Epoch and Torchlight 1, I believe, are the only games on this list that don't support multiplayer. So that's also a negative. But in my personal opinion, Last Epoch has a lot of promise, but I'm trying to re review it as it is right now. And as of right now, I've had quite a lot of fun with it. There's some endgame. You can definitely get invested and try to max out your character. There's enough of the story already in the game and enough gear options to have build variety. But I just can't put it up in S tier. It doesn't have the vast amount of content that Path of Exile has. It doesn't have the, the superior gameplay feel of Borderlands 3 or the variety of content and the good story of Borderlands 2. So it's definitely good and it might become my favorite game of all of these on the list maybe at some point but for now i'm leaving it at s tier uh, sorry a tier not s tier a tier so yeah i i moved dungeons each one and two down because they are kind of antiquated and they don't feel i don't feel like they belong in c tier with the others 
Torchlight one also somewhat and it doesn't have the variety and Titan Quest, it just didn't have anything unique. Like these games are really only if you desperately need more, if you have nostalgia for it. C tier, yeah, they're okay if you need more. And they're kind of games that I would say if you're a really if if you're a diehard fan of this genre, you should have played them, but if you missed out them on them, it's okay. B tier, there's like the games. I would say if you're into the general looting stuff, yeah play them and i guess for for the other one and two also just to see where it all came from they did a great job on the atmosphere and story especially atmosphere for diablo one and story for diablo two i guess although of course there may be differing opinions on all of this yeah a tier that's the the kind of games that i would recommend to pretty much anyone that plays these games nowadays and just wants a little more than the one or two games that they've played maybe and as i said last epoch Keep in mind, no multiplayer, but keep an eye out for it. It's coming soon. And S tier, those are, they are or were at some point my personal favorites. Like, Borderlands 2, I've played for almost 500 hours. Path of Exile, almost 2,000 hours. Borderlands 3, I've only started playing it this year. It's It came out in 2019. It's still relatively new. I'm, I'm still on my first character, and I'm at, like, almost 120 hours, and I still have so many more things I want to do on that character before I even consider starting another one. Like all the other Borderlands games, I've played multiple characters on and played through it several times. Borderlands 3, I'm still on my first character and there's just so much more I want to do before I even start a new one. Borderlands 2, it's just... It just had this... It, it just hit the, the, the sweet spot. It was the perfect successor for Borderlands 1. It, it improved it in every regard. And Path of Exile just... Just by virtue of being a live service, they just offer so much. Which also has its downsides, but... Especially for the price, I can't really argue with it. Even if you disagree with the list, or with some of the choices, I hope that overall you still enjoyed the list. Go to that link, make your own list, take a screenshot of it and post it on Discord. But before you make a list and just post it, any kind of list or ranking is worthless unless you define beforehand what you rank it based on. So, as I said, I try to rank it for somebody that's new to this genre, or maybe not new to this genre, but more like somebody that wants to play these games today. Like, how, how, uh, how do these games rank up today? And some of them are just kind of archaic and, yeah. You know that I love Diablo 1 and 2. I personally would put them in S tier, just like with Borderlands 1. But for somebody that hasn't played them and doesn't have the nostalgia, that's how I rank them. So, be free to make your own list, post them. I'm actually curious how you feel about them. But make sure that you actually, first of all, define what you rank based on based on how much you enjoyed them, how great they were at, its, at their respective release, maybe. You know, that would be different. This is roughly, very roughly, how I feel about the games. At, no, actually, Torchlight is still down there. This is roughly how I feel about the at release.